Well, I don't know if that sky's gonna light up or not. Morning, everyone. How you doing this fine morning? The first of June here. And uh, got up at, I don't know, stupid 30 o'clock to get out here this morning, coming on to the middle of summer. Sunrise is early. And uh, we came out to a place called Petrina Orchard. It's a cherry orchard and a farm owned by uh, my friends, Lee and Kate Petrina. You may recall them from an earlier episode I did last winter in February, I think, when we were shooting down at the uh, Algoma Lighthouse. Stopped at their place on the way back and uh, took a nice shot of their paddock where Kate keeps her horses. At any rate, I'll, I'll put a link to that below. But we're out here this morning to get uh, some footage of uh, the cherry blossoms in full bloom. Now, uh, it's interesting because the rest of the county, all of the cherries are already in bloom and past their peak. But the ones here at Petrina's are just coming on. And that's because they're so close to the lake. It's much cooler by the lake, regardless of what the temperature is anywhere else on the peninsula, inland, or on the Bay of Green Bay side, it's always cooler on the Lake Michigan side. So with those cooler days, cooler mornings, uh, especially, these come on a little bit later than the rest of the county. So let's see what we can get up to this morning. It helps if I unlock the door. So this morning, what are we after? We're after uh, some shots in the orchard with the, the sun angle low through the blossoms. Want to get uh, some kind of backlit blossoms hanging down from the uh, from the ends of the branches, uh, real close. Capture that uh, the light and the uh, focus in the foreground, and then have the background of the trees. Kind of nice and blurry, a nice bokeh behind it with some uh, some of the light washing over the grass, the heavy dew on the grass, and also the dandelion. So that's that's one shot I want to get today. Another shot I want to get actually is of dandelions. Although they're past their peak here, they haven't been mowed yet. But a lot of the guys who keep orchards up here, they love dandelions because the dandelions attract pollinators. And the dandelions will bloom typically just before the blooms come on 
the cherries. So it brings in a lot of pollinators. Now, I know that my honeybees come to this orchard. Uh, Kate has told me that in the past, and I've seen them here. Uh, actually, as the crow flies, I live less than a mile from here. So bees will forage up to five miles if they have to, but typically a mile, mile and a half radius is good for them. I don't have a radius because I have the lake out in front of my house. So they'll come a little bit farther inland and I've seen them on the buds here before. And how do I know they're my bees and not somebody else's bees? They're, uh, they're carniolans. So uh, most people up here have Italian bees because they uh, produce a lot of honey. I have carniolans because they're a little bit hardier. And how do you tell the difference between a carniolan and an Italian? It's a good question. If you observe them, their behavior is a little bit different. And you can always tell the Italian bees because they talk a lot more with their hands. Actually, that's not true. <laughs> Carniolans are darker in color. Italian honeybees, on the other hand, are uh, very golden in color. Their abdomens are very golden in color. So why do you have different breeds of bees, you might ask? Well, just like different breeds of dogs or any livestock, cattle, horses, they have certain uh, characteristics and certain qualities. Some bees will forage more than others. Some bees are hardier in the winter. Some bees are better groomers. They're better at uh, knocking off mites, which are the bane of existence to every beekeeper the world known, the world around. So, yeah, so that's how I know my bees are up here. Uh, they're not gonna be up here this morning. It's a little too cold. It's about 50 degrees and they're cold-blooded animals. So they need it to be about 57, 58 degrees before they're going to venture far from home. So they'll stay either in the hive or very close to the hive when the weather's cool like this, so. All right, uh, I think I have what we need. Let's take a walk through and uh, see what we could find. I, I do want to get pictures of, you know, there's uh, kind of your typical pictures of orchards. And uh, you're going to see some of that in the drone footage. And, but I wanted to get something kind of uniquely different. And that kind of symbiotic relationship between the dandelions and the cherry blossoms, I think, tells a pretty good story. So that's the story I'm hoping to tell today. When I started 40 years ago growing, uh, there were well over 300 growers. Now there's about seven growers in Door County. And the largest grower is uh, Sequest Orchards from Sister Bay Area. They're, they have over a thousand acres. The other five growers are less than uh, 50, 60 acres each. Uh, it's becoming like dairy. The, the small family farms are going they're gone, the history, and it's becoming big, just like the dairy industry. You know, you can't, you can't survive unless you're big, and that's just the way it is, you know, it's a shame. We had a, a bug came into the cherry crop uh, five years ago from China called spotted wing drosophila. It's a fruit fly that there's no, no known, you can't, it's very difficult to control, no natural predators, and it's uh, destroyed. It's caused me to spray maybe five times as much to get about a third as much profit. It's become devastating. The little profit we made is gone. We're losing a lot of markets. Uh, Turkish imports have come in. 
to our uh, United States. They're unregulated, they don't have tariffs, and they've taken over the natural, the markets in the United States. They're, they're, they're buying Turkish cherries, the big, grow, the big buyers, Costco, and some of them buy these uh, uh, imported cherries, and it, it's taken away our domestic uh, sales. So it's, it's a tough, tough business. I enjoy it. I still enjoy it, but it's, it's tough to enjoy when you're not making any money at it anymore. Yeah. This looks good, actually. Yeah, nice backlight coming through hitting these dandelions here. So this, I think, we're going to try to make a composition from. All right. We have to get low, very low. The sun's getting higher and We need to have it in the top of our frame. Pretty dewy out here this morning too. that uh, dandelion perfectly in focus. Get the whole dandelion plant in. for a vertical because I can't get the top of the tree in. There we go. No better. Nice backlight on it there. Okay. I think that's my shot. Lovely. Lovely. All right. Take some shots of the, the sun through the, uh, the branches here. Try to get some, a little bit of a starburst going. And probably do that handheld.
want to shoot at uh, aperture priority mode at f18. That gives me 1 25th of a second ISO 100. We should get a nice starburst from this. Right there. Auto focus. <coughs> Good one. I want to get uh, one of these buds against this brilliantly blue clear sky here. Just finding the right branch to do that. Oh, that's nice there now. with you. I was out here yesterday morning scouting this. See how the blossoms looked. I took a few photos then. So. At the end of this video I'll show you those too. It's a big reveal. You know, here's some of our little yellow darlings. They've opened up their, their uh, heads. Maybe uh, you can get a shot or two of the yellow flowers. Um, what I wanted to tell you was a lot of people ask, why are the trunks of cherry trees white? Why well, they're painted white actually. So why are they painted white? They have very thin skins, very thin bark, these trees. And uh, they're subject to uh, a lot of disease and insect damage, but what can really ruin an entire orchard in no time at all is if they start to uh, run their sap too early in the spring. So they're painted white to reflect off the surface of the snow uh, and not absorb the heat that comes off the late winter snows. The heat that bounces off keeps the tree warm. The tree thinks it's time to wake up, starts running sap, then it gets cold again. And that can easily kill a tree or damage it pretty severely. So they paint them white to reflect the sun's rays and the heat. dodge that sun a little bit behind the branches so you don't get too bright of a starburst. I gotta get lower here. This is nice the way the lines are leading to the back here. You see that? And uh, the way the light's playing off the dew here on these uh, weeds, whatever they are, amongst the dandelions and the grass. So that's lovely right there. There we go. 
Helps to turn on the camera. Okay. A little more, a little more sun. Lovely, okay. That's nice, the way the light is playing off, off that now. Yeah, good stuff. All right, let's move on, shall we? Well, as you can see, it's clouded over, at least for now. Does it for me for today. I think we got what we need uh, between yesterday morning and uh, today. We'll find out. So it's just a matter of packing up, heading home, 7.15 in the morning. Yeah, it'll be on and off clouds and sun all day, so. Yeah. I appreciate you coming with me this morning. It was great fun. It was nice being out here with the drone at, at sunrise, even though it wasn't much of a sunrise. But you take what you get, right? Whatever light gives you, you try to work with it. So... <clears throat> By the way, these cherry orchards here in Door County, uh, these are tart cherries for the most part, no sweet cherries, not Bing cherries or any of that. So the uh, cherries here are for baking. Uh, the preferred variety of cherry up here is Mount Marincy. I think that's how you pronounce it. And uh, yeah, they're tart. <laughs> they're very tart. They'll make your lips pucker. Ah, I got a little damage to the edge of the blade there. Check that next time. Yeah, Mount Morrency cherries. They'll make you pucker and make your eyes water. But they're for baking. They're excellent for cherry pie. And chances are, if you buy cherry pie filling, uh, there's a pretty good chance, actually, that those cherries came from here in Door County. It was a good morning all together. And I appreciate you coming along with this morning. You didn't have to get up early like I did. I was up at, well, I woke up at 2 o'clock, but I got out of bed at 3.30. Not sleeping much these nights. Don't know why. Maybe it's an age thing. At any rate, I'm glad you joined me this morning. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Learned a little bit about uh, Door County's number one agricultural export, cherries. 75 million pounds of cherries every year in Door County. Over 2,500 acres of cherries. So uh, it's kind of what we're famous for up here. And I do love a good Door County tart cherry pie. There you are. I couldn't remember where I left you. I've been looking all over for you. So until next time, please stay safe and uh, we'll see you down the road. Thanks everyone.